program. Uh, we have a busy schedule of events in this semester. We invite you to visit the Harriman webpage uh, and to look and see what you'd be interested in seeing on Ukrainian themes. I'll just mention a couple that are coming before we get to our talk today. Tomorrow, and these are just, I'm mentioning upcoming events that are tied in somehow with today's topic. Tomorrow, a Ukrainian Film Club uh, will be hosting a discussion with filmmaker Oleksandr Shur, who is uh, producing uh, a war drama called Bucha. Uh, and the, the film is in its, its, its being created as it is, but the director's here and he's gonna be talking about it. So please come tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. right in this atrium uh, right here um, for that event. And then our October 11th at noon, online only, uh, uh, there's an event entitled International Justice and Accountability for War Crimes in Ukraine, which is a meeting of the New York Corrupted Public Policy Series co-hosted by Harriman and New York University George, Jordan Center. So that's online. Uh, but please look, there's a bunch of events we have coming that uh, I think you will find interesting. But thank you for coming uh, to today's event, which is entitled, What Did the Ukrainian-Russian War Change in the World? Very um, happy to welcome Sasha Romantsova, uh, who's right here, uh, to, to talk about this. Uh, Sasha studied at the University of Economics and Law in Kiev, where she obtained a master's degree in international economics from the Faculty of International Relations receiving a second master's degree in project management after a couple of years. At the end of 2021, she obtained a master's degree in conflict management and mediation. Since May, 2014, she has pursued her professional career as a human rights defender at the Center for Civil Liberties. Sasha's first project involved monitoring and documenting human rights violations and political persecution in Russian occupied Crimea. From May of 2014 until the end of 2016, Sasha has coordinated mobile observation of human rights violations and war crimes in eastern Ukraine, and has coordinated uh, and has continued monitoring political uh, persecution in occupied Crimea. Since September 2017, Sasha has served as executive director of the Center for Civil Liberties, and from February 24th, 2022. She has also worked to coordinate the documentation of war crimes and advocacy as part of the global initiative Tribunal for Putin. Sasha participates in field missions in the Kiev region. Uh, please welcome to Harry Minister. Thank you. Oh. I, I'm just real laughing that I'm exactly have plus one Duke University, North Carolina. Uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's still in there. But, uh, yeah, that was human rights and um, uh, social justice program. Uh, yeah, so like like you hear, I'm really love to study sometimes. So so it's just my my way how I'm reflexive what happened during some part of my life. Uh, so yes, it's happened with me from 2014. Uh, that's all our story will begin. Uh, maybe you heard about situation now in Nagorno Karabakh. Mm -hmm. uh, do, like let's raise the hand please who understood where is it geographically thank you thank you thank you nice okay do you know about conflict zone between uzbekistan and kyrgyzstan mm -hmm. like place like osh like mm -hmm. raise the hand who know where is it great do you heard about conflict between kyrgyzstan and tajikistan okay do you know where is it Okay, great. Let's. So just imagine that we usually this region called post Soviet. We don't like it. So we call it uh, traumatized by Soviet. Uh, so it's a country which exactly have a common history of near the 70 years and problematic was uh, one day, one guy who called Stalin, which uh, Putin called great manager. We called, first of all, great crime maker. So this guy decided where exactly border between eight different ethnic group will go in and two region uh like like i, I know that you use caucasian for understanding white people so i need like region of caucasus mountain <laughs> like this and region of central asia country it's a place where exactly um a lot of we call it slow time bomb ethnic slow time bomb was putting because it's some enclave of different ethnic at the territory of other countries. 
And many years, this ethnic even never separate themselves. So the, they, they live together. They know one of them, Kyrgyz, other Uzbekistan, but they never like think differently that it's really important, big deal or something like this. But during the Soviet time, uh, they do that. They separate people in this way that you have, look, you have a country and some small spot of their uh, territory inside other countries. Uh, why I speak about that? Because that was way how how exactly Soviet Union um, high level authority catch this uh, catch this ethnic group and like involve them in the Soviet Union mechanism about Moldova, Ukraine, Belarus, and uh, Baltic country. That's work other uh, approach. That was approach like separate them from Europe. Because all of this Eastern parts of Europe exactly always was a common territory with a lot of changes of Slavic uh, and non-Slavic like Bokinian or Baltic or Finna Ubers uh, like population, which exactly really feel, feel it's really common. And that's a huge mythology about three brotherhood nations, Belarusian, Russian, and Ukraine, explain every time why, why we exactly one language, one population, one culture. That's exactly mythology creating, uh, not even uh, exactly Stalin or Lenin before. That was started from Pyotr first. And before that, first who started change the history to explain why now we have a power for hold this territory. It's uh, Eon Grozny, how we call it. It's Eon Terrible. This guy first time changed the history of territory, which after this will hold Rus. So he exactly take the monk who usually wrote the litopisi so that, and, and change how it's need to be to explain why, why he need to have a power or all of this territory. So why I need to uh, do this remark before, just understanding what exactly situation now and what uh, Russian Ukrainian war open like a box of Pandora. So Russian Federation, it's an old style empire. And it's old style empire, which exactly canalized, uh, make a colony from nearest territory. Uh, we work a lot now uh, for explaining what happened in the territory of Ukraine with uh, country in Latin America, or for example, Africa. When we spoke about uh, colonization, they always have, you don't have a colonization. Colonization is which people from one color of skin, like expropriate people of other color of skin and always go like coming from some ocean or something like this. No, but if you will, will for example, look at the uh, history of uh, Osman Empire or austro uh, Hungarian Empire, it's nearest territory. So it's not always big water need to be between them. And it's not always like differences, like, like deep ethnic differences need to be. But if you will speak about Russia, uh, Russia Federation now, yes, they have a ethnic, really deep other ethnic region, which exactly they now um, recruit much more soldiers than from European just, uh, uh, part of Russia and send them to the front line. And so people from ethnic republic was killed, but children's looks like European. They still from territory of Ukraine and, and trying to implement them as a territory of Russia Federation. Just for understanding, it's like primitive racism. Exactly. So, uh, so when that started, when Russia still continue to think that like empire, they have so-called natural territory of influence. So Belarus, Ukraine, Moldova, it's our natural spreading uh, autocracy, like implementation, any of our ideas, something like this. So it looks like exactly like third rate idea of that we need to have environment or territory for our lives, something like that. So uh, when Russia Federation started um, 
in 2014 occupation of Crimea. Before that, they saw that each revolution which happened in the territory of Ukraine, re revolution at the stone at 1991, revolution, uh, Orange Revolution in 2004, and Revolution of Dignity, 2013-14, it's exactly separate Ukrainian population from Russia population and from this common uh, area of so-called uh, three brotherhood uh, three brotherhood uh, population and bring us back to European culture to European connections that's it's totally scared movie for Putin ever because that's mean that tradition of democracy which exactly existed the territory of Ukraine more than 300 years like minimum for example territory of Ukraine have 300 cities with Magdeburg law. Who knows what that means, Magdeburg law? Okay, Magdeburg law, it's, it's, uh, it's right for some city have self-management, self-organization. So the city decided what kind of taxes will be inside, what kind of connection they will be with foreign cities and all of this. So that's called Magdeburg because it's coming from Germany. From, from city where it's, that was started. And in the territory of Ukraine, 300 such city was exist. How many you think such city was exist in the territory of Russia Federation? Proposition, yeah, exactly, zero, never. Last one who try and do that, that was Great Novgorod and they kill all of them. So that's, that's all tradition of democracy, which after Magdeburg law, that was showing like in great peace, that was Cossack state, where it's absolutely democratic um, way of political representation, interest of population, protest. So all of this really don't like, and Soviet Union trying to, not even Soviet Union, started from Russian part, they're trying to, to kill it, like idea. Uh, for example, so-called Kalmyuska Kazachistwa, it's exactly part of Kozak who live at the territory Donetsk and Lugansk region now. Mm -hmm. Kalmyusk, because we have Kalmyus there like river. So that was one of the most independent part of Kozaks. So Ekaterina Great killed homeless people, burned their villages, and banded the possibility to remind them at any documenting after this. So you can find only local memorials and uh, story from family to family. Why so? Because that was that was exactly the mechanism of democracy which any Russian empire prefer. Not Russian empire, not Soviet empire in that time. Join us. So all of this is just prehistory. So these three revolutions showed the Russian Federation that exactly people who can speak in the same language, like all the people in the territory of Ukraine understood, and most of them can express themselves in Russia. Not because Russia and Ukraine, it's same language. No, we just have more experience in that. So, and that's why it's so dangerous for Putin and hold the system around the Putin. This example of democracy near of them, because like I told, traumatized together by Soviet Union, that means all of we are so traumatized and any of us can be good, can be exactly create the state where the, each of us like feel comfortable, find our possibility to realize our dreams or something like this. And when Ukraine starts to build something like this, it's too dangerous for Russia to show that no, no, exist other way. So that's why from 2000, 11 last that was last massive in, uh, peaceful demonstration at the territory of Russia Federation called Balotnaya Square. Maybe you heard about that. That was last time when exactly the Russian population trying to do publicly something to show they against something, some practice at the political Russia Federation. And uh, and after this, Russia Federation decided no no no. It looks bad that Maidan from 2004 started uh, like started to replicate at the territory of Russia Federation. So we need we need clean it. We we need don't give any opportunity exactly started. In 2011 started officially hold this 
huge program of destroying any alternative voices inside the Russian Federation. So we collaborate with uh, such human rights defender organization like Memorial. It's a huge net of organization inside the Russian Federation and even outside. And Belarusian human rights organization like Vesna. It's one of the oldest, they exactly fight against Lukashenko with when it was not the mainstream. So in 1996, uh, uh, exactly, that was first. So all, all of this, uh, all of the people before just, we are worked together in nearest condition. But after 2011, day by day, cutting journalists, cutting any alternative politician, cut, cut possibility to develop or work human rights defenders organization, push out any international organization, any international foundation could can support such human rights defender organization. So all of this, it's happened during the big, big, big period to buying oil and gas from Russia by the whole of Europe. Why I exactly now put in the light in this moment, because that situation when human rights defenders, 20 years told them, guys, you give the money wrong people, nobody hearing. And now when full uh, full scale invasion at the middle of Europe happened, when we look back, we understood that it's because exactly Russia Federation was not stopped during this internal actions and such external actions like creating conflict at the, with Georgia, with Moldova, take apart conflict in Syria, and supported conflict situation between Armenia and Azerbaijan, between Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan, between Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. So all of that was separate scenario from Russia Federation. And now when Russia Federation exactly planned, finished really quick, all of these guys who show bad examples near the our borders exactly told the, all the people around that they're not exist. Ukrainians, it's not a separate culture. Ukrainians, not a separate population. Ukrainians don't have their own language. Ukrainians don't have nothing they all uh, like created by them, themselves. So they don't don't have enough resource to support their previous conflict management program in all other region. When they started in uh, exactly occupation of Crimea in 2014, we were there. Uh, we documented war crimes uh, and uh, exactly political persecution in the Crimea, biggest numerous of war crimes connected with Crimea Tatars. Okay, raise a hand who knows who is Crimea Tatars. Okay, great. It's native population of Crimea. And so it's indigenous people de facto. Indigenous people there, and they don't have other land, other motherland except exactly Crimea. Except that during the Stalin period, they were sending out, so deported from territory of Crimea, together with other smallest uh, ethnics like Karain, Kremchiki, um, uh, Greek, uh, Bulgarian, Armenians. But this population have other uh, lands where they come, comes back. That's so, but Crimean Tatars that was just sent to the Central Asia and they was banded, comes back to Crimea till the falling down of Soviet Union. So these people have really strong peaceful movement right back to their native lands during the whole history of Soviet Union. Exactly. So. That's why they are really good organized. They have the own representation mechanism. So it's called Medjilis and Kurultai. So it's really important because it's how exactly Russia Federation trying to heal any possibility of democracy because it's a mechanism of representation, same like Great Britain. I mean, each one, um, each uh, 300 Crimea Tatars have their own representatives at the Kuril type. Each thousand of Crimea Tatars have their own representatives at Mijilis. So it's quite good representation mechanism. And now Russia Federation told, called them terroristic organization. Sure, because if you are democracy mechanism, who, who you are, you are terroristic organization against the Russian Federation. 
So if we will speak about Don uh, Donbass, I mean uh, Donetsk and Lugansk acquired territory, there they create puppet exactly republic. How they they do that? They exactly started commit war crime there. All what you see now at the Bucha, all what you can see at the any, as I understood, CNN choose like 24 hours show in exactly Ukraine news. So all what you see there, that's happened eight years in the territory of Lugansk and Donetsk occupied regions, because it's not all the regions, all the East Ukraine, but um, Lugansk and Donetsk occupied region. And biggest problem, it's uh, exactly killing, kidnapping, torturing, illegally detaining people. Illegally detaining is truly illegally detaining. I mean, it's not mean that people was put into jail. People was put in such place, like, for example, basement of university. Just imagine, you have a basement here. Just imagine, it's some of this basement, you are not doing something positive. Just people live there like half of here without any connection with the relatives, sometimes without normal food and without any medicine support or something like this. So it's this practice now, they spread to the whole the territory which was occupied. So what we have, we have quite big economy, Russia Federation, who exactly was implement uh, the international economical relationships because they have a resource. Now this resource really popular, oil and gas, but next one, it will be fresh water. Water which you can drink, because now we have it's a territory of all the earth, we have a crisis of this, and Russian Federation have one of the biggest, exactly, uh, reserves. Reserves, yeah, reserve for that. And even now they have a new agreement with China about that. So it's a place with a huge resource, and but nobody cares how exactly around of this resource live their own population. They cut in any rights, they create 140 million zombies, which exactly when you're trying to speak with them, you understood so oh, people don't have any responsibility for their lives. They create unique machine of propaganda, which exactly working not only for this population, for any person who speak in Russian language, they officially have legislation which call side So I will try and translate like in direct way. It's co-mother lenders. Any person who speak in Russia, it's co-mother lender uh, person. And that's mean they have a right to protect you. They will not ask you, do you want or not? They will write to protect you. Just imagine that uh, Great Britain decided that they have a right to protect any person who speak in English. I think Australia will be really surprised. Who <laughs> will we come? So it's, um, and this situation, they spread this propaganda and create exactly new kinds of war crimes by the propaganda. And they spread the corruption because much easier for them live in the world without democracy. Democracy is too complicated. And Putin exactly don't find any place for himself at the democracy world. So that's why they trying to uh, destroy democracy like a model. Now by this invasion, they're trying to show democracy like Power of, of law will not help you when somebody attack you by harm, something like rockets or kinjal or something like this. So like fairy trail never protect you if someone occupied your territory. So they trying to show that exactly democracy, it's a weak model. They will not protect you. They're trying to show that if you have enough money and can pay the people, they will not interesting to be part of democracy and take a part of responsible for their own state. So if Russia Federation much bigger, with whole this history of different empires, with whole this idea of colonization and previous ideas, communistic style, for example, violence can solve any problem. If not exist person, not exist problem. The main idea of communism, terroristic uh, action. All of this we call Rashid. Rashid was, was created like a new understanding. First time that was described in 2010 
uh, by Ostap, uh, exactly one of my employees, Ostap Kitka. Uh, he described in 2010, exactly it's a mix of last, I think, 100 years, problematic ideology, like, uh, like uh, communism, imperialism, colonialism, chauvinism, Nazism, because they, they took different parts, worse exactly parts of this, and mixed in fascism. Uh, now we have normal dis uh, describing this in the Wikipedia. Russians trying to, uh, regularly trying to destroy this in the English, so <laughs> so good that <laughs> they take it. To, it exists there. So and Ukraine exactly the place where the people make a decision and going there like revolution by revolution. It's not really quick. It's like ten years, ten years really revolutions. We are going to the our self management democracy. Uh, choice and Russia Federation exactly afraid of that because before that they spread the idea in their own population you need a leader you can manage yourself so Ukraine it's really dangerous example of them so this war changed a lot because even inside the Ukraine there's propaganda and exporting of corruption that exactly worked a lot of population think maybe we can find other way, not fighting. Maybe we we have we look same like common cartoons in the childhood. Maybe we'll have negotiating or something like this. But 24 February stop any illusions. And people understood that only one way how we get our democracy choice, it's a, started a fight. And what happened? You can see now at the Ukraine two really important uh, flaw. First of all, it's building modern state in the middle of the world with the internet. So now when we discuss about corruption, now when we discuss about uh, how people can manage their state through the telephone, we, we seriously can. We, we can find each information which state generates about citizens in our smartphones. It's called DIA. So all of this you can see now, but in the same way, uh, in, same, uh, in same time, at the Ukraine, we exactly don't have a strong justice system. It's still a problematic because you need, you need to build it, you need to uh, renew. We still have uh, some people who think that corruption, it, that was a good strategy to survive during the Soviet Union. So it's really difficult to say, no, no, it needs to be other strategy. So now, step by step, we change this. And third, you see total self-management of people. You can't find the person who are not crowdfund any money to some kinds of initiative around the army. Four, four billion, it's milliard, yeah? Billion, milliard, yeah? Four billion dollars Ukrainians crowdfund by themselves during the one year. It's not only we sure our economy for 60% now living for support outside, but Ukrainians crowdfund for their own army for million dollars, four billion dollars. And each Ukrainians who not fight now at the front line, they include in some process of logistic support front line and logistic support vulnerable groups. Uh, one uh, your colleagues from Spain exactly made great research uh, about civilian resistance. So, so they describe all this system. And human rights defenders, what we're doing? We do documenting of war crimes. Why so? Soviet Union, same like Russian part, was not judged like people who commit the crimes against not only Ukrainians, against like Finland, against the Baltic countries, against the um, Armenia, Azerbaijan, any and any of the people, any neighbors of Russian Federation. So I will just show you how it looks like now. It's Tribunal for Putin initiative. Uh, that's, if we will speak about how many it's people, it's three members who started. It's Kharkiv Human Rights Protection Group's oldest human rights initiative in Ukraine, started during the Soviet Union time even. Um, Ukrainian Helsinki Human Rights Union, uh, that's uh, 
nothing is long story by Helsinki, but uh, it's exactly joint of human rights who hold the territory of Ukraine and Central Pacific Liberals, it's my organization. And uh, exactly, for example, Hyper Human Rights Protection Group, they are members of Memorial, like an international network. So uh, Central Pacific Liberals have a Nobel Peace Prize last year and the uh, Human Rights Group, exactly uh, same like a member of uh, Memorial have a Nobel Peace Prize last year. So that's other 24 initiative which cover whole the territory of Ukraine. So what that means? That means that we have opportunity collect information from whole the territory of Ukraine and different kinds of, uh, so we collect, oh yeah, it's 53,214 cases. Each week we have plus 1,000 cases. What that means? Exists, uh, for example, type type of incident. It's type of incident uh, like Rome Institute have a description. What that means for crimes. What it means international crimes against humanity. What that means crime of genocide. And so each our lawyer make a uh, make put the type. It depends on Rome Institute description. And for example, here you can find a live statistic about what kind of object was attacked. For religious buildings. We uh, at the Ukraine we have 72 different confession, like religions. Uh, that's uh, we even have a uh, Buddhist uh, temple in the middle of Ukraine in, in Chernobyl. So we have Muslim, we have Oriental or uh, Orthodox Church, we have uh, traditional Orthodox Church, incomplete Orthodox Church, five or six. Uh, so it's a uh, total it, exactly all of this building attack except Russia Orthodox Church because they are part of it. Exactly. Um, or hospitals. You can see each of this like a systematic uh, attack object. For example, it's not, if you look like medicine object, you can see that it's not only here, it's a quite territory, this one. Yeah. They try and do that by rockets, but all the territory of Ukraine. But that's not mean that some concrete soldier exactly decided that the hospital is really cool place to base for army. No, that's mean that exists some order about this object and what need to do with that. Uh, ju just to remind you that by the international humanitarian law, any medicine object, even it's called like military and hospital, they need to be protected by the shelling or something like this. So when we when we work with all of this case, we go into this place, we speak with people if we have access. So, for example, my native uh, town is Nikolai here. And uh, and he, he was never be uh, exactly occupied, but he was really uh, deep shell because uh, it's main that was uh, front line here. But exist this territory, which was occupied and liberated three months before. So before that, we have uh, information from relatives about T2 uh, forcibly missing person. And when this place was, Stingurivka, uh, was exactly liberated uh, and deoccupied, uh, they found 27 bodies in one basement. So, and that was two person there. So for understanding how much information we have from occupied territories, like it's not like 10% what really happened there. So what happened with occupied territory? It's not just a change of fact. Every day it's war crime there. So every day Bucha happened in each of this, each, each of this territory, which exactly going to the south and east part of Ukraine. So when we speak about peace, we not mean that exactly stop the shooting. We exactly, first of all, about liberate whole our people from this suffering. And uh, so we're going to such place. Uh, we started from Kiev because uh, we stayed Kiev during the whole day in Asia period when that it was even risk of surrender to concrete Kiev. But we started collect the data from first from OSINT sources. And after this, uh, going by, by food, by uh, different uh field missions and speak by going to each village by one by one and speak with people collect all the information what that mean documentation documentation that means that we look potential war crimes crimes against humanity crimes or genocide result we are not making investigation we can we don't have a mandate 
uh, when that make investigation have only prosecutor office at the Ukraine or someone who have uh, some agreement with them. For example, now at the Ukraine work international uh, international team of investigation from 12 countries and separate international team of international criminal court. So all of them, they have a mandate. So if they get some information, it will go into the court. But if we'll get some information, we need to give them to, to them, it's going to the court. Uh, so that's why if somebody asks us, uh, are you documented war crimes committed by Ukrainian soldier or something like right? uh, We don't not always have understanding who potentially can commit it because we are not trying to get who is, who is guilty. Uh, we have uh, our partners inside the, our initiative people and who try to get it. It's Truth Hounds, a really recommended, uh, really cool initiative. They start the same work from 2015. They can say that we um, we have 52,000. They have, like, for example, like uh, 40 cases, but this case full investigate. And they just agree it and give it to prosecutor to, to prove it in the court. It looks like this. So why we do that, even at the, at the time when we was at the risk of be attacked and both my name and name of our head of our organization, Alexander Matuchuk, we in the list to be destroyed because Russian Federation has, has such list, which they started from the president and all other people who can um, who mobilize society around, the, uh, around them themselves. So we was in this list. Uh, so why we start to do that? Because each situation changed and any moment can happen situation but we can judge all of this so that's why it was a first idea to get all the information now we collaborate with all the form of international international justice because it exists for example from un some investigation team from oec exist international criminal court team exist our prosecutor office but what we are so really important that international mechanism too old and they was not modern, uh, they was not renewed for new challenge of kind of work. For example, uh, now International in uh, Institute of Studying War, War Study, okay, um, they give uh, 37 war conflict around the world, which we can call war. 13 of them more than 10 years, and all of them hybrid form. So it's Military, it's information, it's cyber, and it's economical. So, 24 February, Russian Federation trying to destroy all the database information about citizens in Ukraine. Just imagine that tomorrow you're waking up and you don't have no your number, security insurance, no your passports, no your visa information, no your tax paying information, nothing. They're not trying to steal it, like usual hackers trying just to steal this. It, trying to destroy it. We have first cyber war, world cyber war, now between Russia and Ukraine. So, and it's happened every day. I mean, I mean, every day, sometimes it's something like name of people or number of day cards from some campaign, but uh, two days before, uh, Ukrainian hackers figure out, hold the position, hold the uh, Ministry of Defense objects of Russia Federation because they talked about exactly the database of uh, power station, uh, electricity power. It's not ministry, but it's service. So they, they just uh, calculate which object is there. So it's happened like this. And what has changed? I was actually about how that changed the world. First of all, we figure out that biggest inter- state organization now can ask for the terms of modern world. We need to change it. We need to rebuild it. Uh, sometimes many create something new, like for example, international tribunal against crimes of aggression. We figure out that sometimes you can don't have uh, fresh water for drinking, but have internet. That's what happened with Ukraine. Ukraine high level, um, spread uh, connection by internet. Each grandma have smartphones. That's why it's most documented uh, war, war exactly at the Ukraine. Before that, Holocaust was most documented. So, uh, 
And third one, uh, we can't just try to put anyone at the table of negotiation because sometimes it's not something complicated. Russia exactly do primitive aggression 19th century style. They, and they put all their population in this level of self-responsibility about their state. So sometimes uh, people ask what kind of program of rehabilitation for Russian population can be. First of all, we need to take out this propaganda system. And after this, send like thousands of therapists to them because it's it's huge numbers of people totally disoriented in their life. And they look like people addict from, uh, from drugs. Seriously, when you start to speak, when you propose some arguments for relatives, we understand that most of Ukrainians have relatives as a children or Russian aggression. You speak with relatives who you think need to care about that you will be survived in some way. And one moment when your argument going to the high points, they feel emotionally pain. They start to scream at you. They can't answer you something personal. They start to scream at you. So it's it's seriously it's a huge psychological I don't know situation which we need to research how it's happened exactly and what what to do with all of these people. So it looks like this. I think here I will stop to, to give the opportunity to put the questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Yeah, let's open up uh, the floor to questions, uh, both here and online. Uh, just raise your hand, please, and say who you are. Hi, um, I'm Amy. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, I'm currently a student here, and I'm doing research on Russian war of imperialism. Oh, I'm sorry, from Kyiv, Ukraine. Um, and um, one of the things that I have been thinking about is the fact that Russia did not did not undergo the same process of decolonization, just like, for instance, the European powers did, or did not undergo like the process of decommunization, like for instance, the Nazi Germany government did. And so the like Russian people, they do not believe in the atrocities they commit. They do not want to talk about this. They do not want to see them. And so, you know, like once we punish Putin and other people responsible, there's still going to be this, as you said, huge million crowd of like chauvinists and people who praise war. And, you know, I have relatives in Siberia and they call me and my mom Nazis. <laughs> um, um, so best recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious, uh, how do we start off this bottom up approach? How do we, you know, uh, communicate with them about the war crimes their government and their people have committed? And um, is there something that Ukrainian people in Ukraine should start and, uh, you know, kind of explain to the world that like, okay, this is what we need to do, so it doesn't want to do it again. Exactly, it's a, a, it's a trap because like each empire, when they colonize someone, colonial started flowing to empire. So we, I mean, we as Belarusian and Ukrainian population is only one who really understood uh, Russians at all. And I mean Russians, I mean now Russian citizens and whole the ethnic. Uh, because only we know all this story about what, what happened with them. And the good news exist people inside the Russian Federation or who, who need to escape from there, but they working for Russian Federation who try and do that. They even make instruction how they imperialized themselves. So they exist. If it's interesting for you, I will send it to you. It's really nice. They trying to uh, speak with each other to explain what kind of sign of uh, sign of imperialistic thinking, like you can show. For example, expect that all the people around the world will speak Russian. Can you speak normal language? It's usual, and that's uh, that's one of the points. They they really conceptualized like six main points, and it's really uh, it's uh, I think I think that's from one side it's. 140 million people. So even theory of variety and this give the understanding that it's a different group of people. So we need to find this who 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 feel that better and who trying to not be involved in all of this propaganda ocean of information. Uh, that's from one side. From other side, yes, only we put all of these new crimes in the legal uh, legal standards. 
That's why it's so important. Even we never arrest Putin, I think that's my prognosis. He will be killed by his own population because cult of violence, it's what he bring to the society of Russia Federation. I not believe that someone give us opportunity to arrest him. He too much now, he too much connected with all others. So, but I will be glad it's happened because um, we need to judge him even, he, even if he will be killed. Because justice started not only from the moment when you punish perpetrator, justice started when you call something crimes. When you collect information, how it's happened, what kind of possibility of protect we are not used and uh, or prevention, we are not used all of this. So all of this process we needed. And we needed finally judge not only Putin, but Stalin crimes, because it's million of people who were sent to Gulag, who was killed, who was, and, and exactly, Putin put in the jail, um, Yuriya Dmitrieva. It's, uh, it's one of a historical of memorial movement who finds Sandarmok. It's a huge place where the NKVD killed a lot of people. Not That's people from 40, dif uh, 40 different ethnic during the Soviet Union time. So you can, you can call that uh, Wagner was created for Ukraine. No. 10 years before Wagner commit war crimes in the territory of Latin America and uh, Africa. So if you don't care about that somewhere far, far off your home, and one day it's coming to your home. So that's important point from one side, uh, take the people who exactly wanna do that. For example, such initiative like help desk, it's partly from Russia journalists who, who need to escape from uh, Russia Federation. Uh, they try and do that. They try to show history of the people around all, all of the, this war. And they try to send this message inside the Russian Federation. But Ukraine need to have a, a, our own plan how to rehabilitate these neighbors. Yeah, but we have a bad club of bad neighbors. So around of us, we have a problem with all, oh, maybe Slo Slovakia, but even Slo Slovakia now have a problem. So it's it's not only seriously we, we have turkey we have belarusian we have a poland with i don't know bennett of russian we have a romania funny but same really problematic we have a Chinese we have a country now we have a slovakia which now i don't know what happened, how it's finished with all of this election situation but uh, still so uh so yeah we have a club of really interesting papers uh, so that's why it's really important to remember that common people have possibility to make a great thing. So first of all, this horizontal uh, connection, stop thinking that like all the Russians need to be banded, all the Belarusians need to be banded. It's the uh, uh, it's same, it's wrong strategy. All the people who care about democracy and human rights need to be supported. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, please. Thank you for your talk. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about how this process of war crime documentation at your organization happens. Like, do you have a certain method? Um, how many people do it? Um, mm. Yes. And okay, so it's uh, you pass it, but it's um, joining of more than yes. 20, 28 organizations. So People who going to the field mission, it's nearly 20. People who put and analyze it, put in database, it's near 50 now. There's partly the same for going and more lawyers. And uh, people who made, uh, for example, submission to International Criminal Court. Now we have we have four submission about genocide at Mariupol, shelling by civilian object, um uh, kidnapping civilians and uh, illegal um like for the so it's uh, out court uh, death penalty kills yeah something like this yeah so it's like for so, so after this you analyze all of this database like i told because for international criminal court you need to show that it's systematic it's not only one place uh so all of these take, I think, 100 people from different organizations, hold the Ukraine, sometimes volunteers, sometimes pro bono lawyers, they want to help, so, so they come inside and, and help with that. Um, we have one uh, pro bono lawyer who exactly put the goal, uh, uh, like um, uh, collect 1,000 uh, like 
crimes. So he he going to the whole territory of Ukraine, trying to find each person who's suffering from some some potential international crime, uh, make a case and send to international criminal court. So um, it looks like this. First of all, it's a synth. So it's mean um, like we have even some volunteers from business they uh, give us just uh, pro bono some systems which give opportunity to analyze the web uh, web environment and find some cage by the world some information about something because each village at ukraine have facebook page it's strange but it's exists like this so uh, so you you can like if you're thinking about some territory how we do that with uh, with kiev region we're just going to this uh, district and check Facebook page each of village, which potentially we know information that Russian forces going there. So it, that was occupied. So after this, we prepare for that. Potentially, we understood. Okay, we find potentially work runs here and here. So we put it. Uh, we make like one one car uh, like uh, team that's mo mostly for for people, and they going there and start to speak with people. When you see some information about potential one war crime, that means you bring 15 cases, like minimum. So because when you start to speak with people, sometimes it's chilling, but when it's personal contact with occupators, it's like everyday new war crime. So it looks like there's and when when we hear uh, so we do we, we do that uh, we collect this information like a scene information and after this we check it we we speak with people territorially but sometimes people for example uh, they <clears throat> they was not in the moment when we come first time and they uh, going to outside of Ukraine to I don't know uh, rebuild their house or something this and comes back so sometimes we comes back again to each each of this territory when we have information from about new case or new witness sometimes you have description of what happened but you don't have we need to have a witness by the ONIs we stand we put eight questions maximum we not made deep uh, deep interview why because international criminal court not accept witness which exactly was um, like few times publicly questioned why so because if they have testimony few times so sometimes people change like say maybe three days maybe two days and they start to be not uh, not good witness for or for court representative because international criminal court had high level really qualified protected part so that's they will find they will find any any uh, new details which they change or something like this so that's why we we can do that like sitting in two hours just listening what the person say we put eight questions just for understanding is it potential uh international crime or it just terrible happens during the war sometimes it's happened like this for example we have experience when um one woman explained that half of her house was destroyed by three tanks who, who fight between each other so it's not war crime yeah it's consequence consequences of war but it's not for crime because it's not motivated they wasn't do that special for them so good news that all of these three tanks now service at ukraine ukraine army like this you're welcome thank you we have a um, question online from maria katzman um <clears throat> maria asks uh, russia has attacked churches of the moscow patriarchy as well Yes, including the Transfiguration Cathedral in Odessa and Svetohirsk Labra, which only proves Russia's cruel intents against Ukrainians. Is there any specific reasons for you not to mention these attacks? Why not mention? I'm exactly documented all of them. <laughs> uh, no, I'm I'm exactly uh, yeah. I'm, I'm totally. Uh, you need to understood. We have even uh, we started even special roundtable freedom of religion in Ukraine because for us it's really important that it's respect for each uh, region. And yes, exists exactly priest who was attacked by Russian forces, uh, or Russian Orthodox Church priest. But problem that Svetogorsk Lavra, for example, that was a mechanism to bring arms to Girkin when he started attack Slavians. Uh, whole the Donbass war started from one point, that small city which called Slavinsk, where the 35 people from Russia Federation going to the territory of Ukraine, like 
like usual civilians going to the Svetogorsk Lavra. It's a big uh, monastery and take arm there, which was bringing to Svetogorsk Lavra at the cough. So it's it's not mean that hold the Russian religion or hold the Orthodox Church guilt or something like this, but exist concrete people who take a position in structure of Russian Russian church who exactly act like criminals. So it's not about believing. It's about concrete people who act like criminals. So uh, so yes, and that's why, for example, now we have a, a big uh, court uh, uh, suit about uh, situation around the Lavra at the Kiev. So, but uh, it's uh, at the Slavins exactly one of the priests in the main, uh, one of the priests of Russia, Orthodox Church in the main square uh, at the church don't give opportunity Cossacks coming inside with the with the guns because it's it's banned it's a uh, Orthodox Church uh, tradition to come into the church with the guns and they do that uh, and he uh, they uh, they exactly hit him and he need to leave Flamensk at the first uh, first level so when we speak about uh, objects you can uh, see at the at T4P statistic religion object some of them it's Russian Orthodox Church but it's not destroyed by Ukrainian army. We have one concrete episode when uh, Ukrainian army push out Russian army from uh, from territorial village in the Kiev region. And in the night, they shelling concrete wood church because before that, they know this cordon, before that they put the tank near the church because they know the Ukrainian army usually not uh, like not shell the place where the church is. So they protect by the church, the tank. So they put like 12 tanks around the church. And when they was pushed out from this village in the night, they shell this concrete, uh, concrete this church. So exists reason why I'm not mentioned. Yeah, I'm not mentioned previous 40,000 cases. See, so yes, situation like this. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it, uh, sorry, exists a special project which exactly documents only religion objects during this war. It's called uh, religion at fire. So you, you can, that's all the, uh, all the objects, uh, Muslim object, uh, uh, Jewish object, uh, Orthodox church and all other church. 72. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a little natural question, but important one. Uh, what do you think in there in mechanisms to exclude Russia of the security uh, council in the allegations? Mm -hmm. Can you think of it? Did you speak to someone? Did you know? Yeah, sure. All of us and Minister of Foreign Affairs and uh, a lot of international consultants think about that. From one side, uh, it's a question <laughs> who put the Russia in this place? Because exactly originally it's a place for Soviet Union. So Soviet Union is 15 different, uh, 15 different republic. And uh, so that place, not for Russia, but not exist any documents when uh, Soviet Union was replaced by Russia. Same situation with uh, uh, Chinese uh, Public Republic. So they replaced the previous uh, version of Chinese, China. So, but it's uh, there they have concrete decision. Russia never have this decision. But traditionally, nobody appealed. Nobody complained that it's something wrong. So exists one of procedure at the ch uh, charter of uh, UN, which exactly give opportunity, maybe not replace the Russia from there, uh, but um, uh, broke the veto of Council of Security by the General Assembly. But General Assembly, that means San Marino and Lesotho have sent their voices like USA. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not easiest, but that's sleepy procedure now, but nobody use it. So it's it's one of the ideas started it again, like trying to use it. And second version, it's exactly changed the construction, exactly a security council, last one that I think Biden proposed it. It's include new um constant members like uh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure that it will be good. I think it's happened same like OEC when when you need to consensus make a decision, nobody make a decision at all. Mm -hmm. Uh so but it's one of the ways. But in case if we put more members, how is it gonna <laughs> you just put more members? If that. you change Look, if you will change the construction, how many members can be? Because now it can be only five. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, that means you can change the how will decision will oh. make it. So now it's consensus or someone take, uh, if they say no, it's surely uh, not, not, not happen. So, but uh, it will be long, long, long story. Mm -hmm. Yes, you had a question. Um, I had a great question. So there was this comment of Mr. Gleba um, recently where he said, unfortunately, we are in a kind of deadlock uh, on, on, on the question of the tribunal. So my question is, uh, what is at the core of this reluctance from the West in supporting this process? So why do you see the problem? The problem that exactly war, it's not a crime. War committed by uh, different countries in different situations. So, if we will start it, make a tribunal like um, against crime of aggression, that means the list of the people, like list of the country who need to be judged, will be quite long. So, that's one of the. If we will just trying to simplify this model, uh, that's why Ukraine proposed them other version because create tribunal. It's uh, First of all, decision from Security Council. We don't have them. So that's second part. It's created by General Assembly of UN, but uh, we don't have support enough for that. So you have near the 200 uh, countries. You need to you need to have more than half. Mm -hmm. It's quite difficult. So so at that moment, that not mean they will not work for that. So that moment, they they trying to find the negotiation skills. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I I wanted. To, could you please mention something about this initiative with the prisoner's voice? Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's quite interesting. Maybe explain this brochure and uh, the fifty people that were chosen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from two thousand fourteen, we worked with such topic like political prisoners in the Crimea. So it's people who was arrested because Russia Federation need um, stories to fit it for their own media. Uh, media population. So uh, that's why maybe you heard about Sinsov, mm -hmm. say for like Sinsov, it's, that was our campaign. We started the campaign which called Let My People Go after they say for like Sinsov. And now because Sinsov released and we changed it for Prisoner's Voice, but it's exactly a campaign from 2013 about people who was arrested because of political motivation by Russian Federation. Not because they are politicians or not because they are politi uh, was politically activated. Uh, now uh, include not only political uh, prisoners, but one more, it's uh, it's uh, civilians who was kidnapped by Russia Federation, different reasons. Some of them was a life shield when Russian army uh, just uh, going out from, from Ukraine territory. Some of them need, uh, because Russia exactly act like terroristic organization, so it's just the hostages. It's just a possibility to they they take any people which they need uh, just to uh, just to uh, push Ukraine in the way which they like because for Ukraine people really important I mean Ukrainian citizen it's responsibility for Ukraine and all the Ukrainian society will wait from Ukrainian state that they solve some some of this situation with the prisoning. Uh, but for Russian Federation, it's not so interesting. We always have a problem. They they are not interesting when they own citizens, even which arrested by Ukrainian side or, for example, prisoners of war. We have such situation when four prisoners of war, Russian prisoners of war, which was um, holding the territory of Ukraine, exchange. They send them again to the army, and they again come into our captivity. So it's like it's okay if they give us like. Few our guys to, to same same people, but they're not afraid exactly uh, Ukraine captivity because the Ukraine captivity going to, like international rules, but Russian captivity we exchanged two hundred fifteen Azov style defenders. All of them have anorexia, so they even not feed them normally. One of them that was one huge sporty guys, he he uh, dying uh, because. Because his heart, not uh, all of this situation, all of this change of weight uh, um, can be strong enough, so he's dying. So it's it's one of the way. But it's um, idea of prisoners of war now. There's fifty stories. It's concrete people, civilians. One of a uh, few of them exactly foreigners. For example, one of Spain citizen. He lived in Kherson. 
uh, now it's a Simferopol uh, pretrial jail sitting like like from beginning from uh, from February. Uh, if there is international student like this case, are there any more lobbying from the country where the person is that they try to get no, because Russia exactly negotiation about yeah 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 spain uh spain uh, government trying but, uh, but it's, mm -hmm. it's uh it's helped with um international soldiers because we have a citizen of other countries who come to ukraine have agreement with ukrainian army yeah. so they are not soldiers in their own country i mean they are they are not representative of some army but they we, we call them international legion we exactly have Two Chechen uh, troops. We have uh, two Belarusian troops. We have Armenian, Armenian Georgian, uh, Georgian, Armenian, Azerbaijan troops. We have uh, international troop from uh, from people from different uh, different countries. So uh, once that was exchange uh, releasing from captivity, exactly prisoners of war uh, who has citizenship other countries that was Morocco Great Britain um, USA and that as I understood Prince of Saudi Arabia helped in that mm -hmm. not not they countries because all of these countries Russian Federation for example not accept propositions from Switzerland mm -hmm. represent two sides Switzerland like specialized for that, so they got me because Russia say you unfriendly country. Right. It's like new. Right now, the like Emirates or Saudi Arabia are the countries who are can't basically a little bit. <laughs> uh, exist countries still which still have uh, e uh, economical relationship with yeah. Russian Federation, so mm -hmm. they are interesting in that. For example, India, China, and all this. Why why China was so at first time a lot of people appeal to China, say something like taking part in negotiations something like this turkey takes such place and i think uh, that's why it's again come back how the our conflict changed the world that's why now azerbaijan have a possibility exactly take back their territory and take more armenian territories okay. you know, I'm yes. Yeah, it's not their territories, it's just the, I know the little, uh, international, international law, law it's like, but there are so many like details in this verse, so we can't say that it's their That's territory. why it's all, take their territory and but take the Armenian territory. Right to, to this territory. Yeah, I'm beginning from that, <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, I'm explaining that. So, so, no, 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 I'm, exactly, I, I wasn't. You frame, it's just Armenian original, I mean, I was in Nagorno Karabakh, and I see that fro frozen conflict. That what is exactly yeah, not, right. not solvent situation. And I told about responsibility of Russia Federation, which exactly yeah. put the oil in this conflict. Mm -hmm. Like they call themselves peacemakers, but they exactly not yeah, right. made the any peace. The same thing. They have this oil, and they buy the voices of the world then, and the UN too. So it's long, long story. It's true. Yeah, it's it's really it's it's not so easy like uh, it's same like we said not same as other uh, version but with when we speak about Kosovo Serbia conflict it's situation when that was like big country with nobody to mark exactly borders and and nobody care to do that normally peacefully uh, from from nineties. Sure. Thank you. Uh, are no more questions. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and please thank Sandra for your so, uh, All of you can, can use any information. We have there uh, seven different languages. So, so share information here. It's live statistic and prisoners versus campaign, which you can same find. And, and again, I, I, I will do announcement. Uh, we, yes. Yeah, we accept interns if you want to discover what happened inside the Ukraine, like by your own experience. Uh, we do that like you can come or you can do that online uh virtually so welcome if you want thank you thank you so much thank you yeah. i want some to share a statement of the internships
чудово. У нас є форма на сайті, ми можемо її просто заповнити. Ми підписуємо дому, тому що там все як має. На сайті громадських спорів. Це тільки громадянська штука. Дякую. Дуже приємно Yeah, 